You I like sticking my hands in uh, we can do it slowly holes with, so you with dead things. Yeah, I feel like, um, you guys know Dexter? What am I touching here? Yeah, is it alive? So how old are these carcasses in here? Um, just two weeks old. Hi, how's it going? Hey, how are you? I'm pretty good. What is your name? My name is Janelle Yurig. I am the Director of Ecology here at the Wilds. Okay. I've been here for about four years mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, we, I oversee the restoration ecology work that goes on here and also the native wildlife work. Okay. And so today we're going to show you the beetle barn. And the beetle barn? The beetle barn, yes. Okay, yes. beetles. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. How do you feel about insects? I like them actually. <laughs> that was a long dramatic pause. I like insects. Insects are great. I think they're so important. Um, I just have one issue with one. Uh, Moths. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. What is it about them? The sporadic? Yeah. No. They're violent. You just can't, you can never know and what you just never know what they're doing. They're all, okay. Yeah, yeah. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they have no idea. Okay. Well, you can stay out in the daylight and you should be able to avoid most of them. So. For the most part. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm excited to see some beetles, so let's go and check them out. All right. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. So we got some stuff here. What's going on here? Yeah. So of course I want to show you what they look like since they are such unique creatures. So this is a male. Um, they're kind of sleepy right now, so they are a nocturnal creature. Uh, they're most active about four hours after sunlight. And so right now they're sleeping, um, but with us handling them, they'll, they'll get up. And so if they, if he starts to walk- I'll do the, I'll do the walking thing. Hand. Okay. Yeah. So in, in the beetle barn where we're at today, mm -hmm. um, we will actually set up breeding buckets. So we try to mimic what they would do out in the wild. So we've got these five gallon buckets uh, that we provide. They have soil in them. We'll put a rat in on top. Um, and then we'll just put a pair in there and then they'll do the rest. They'll pull all the fur off. They will then um, make it into a little meatball and use those excretions to help preserve it. Um, mm -hmm. They'll bury it and then lay eggs next to it and then the larva will feed on that for, for two weeks. So in here we even do larva checks just to see which buckets are successful, which ones aren't. Um, and then uh, we can better make decisions on who else to breed if we need to breed more individuals. And, Look at, do you so see those, uh, those, those little jaws there? Now, if I was afraid of beetles, I would be afraid of those jaws. They are very large. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you don't try to squeeze the beetle, you should be fine. These mm -hmm. guys are actually pretty um, docile uh, until, you know, they feel threatened and then they might actually bite you. But they do have pretty large mandibles. Mm -hmm. um, they are also extremely strong. Um, this is a female and that one's a male. They can actually detect a dead animal from like mile, two miles away. Wow. Um, and so what uh, what happens is that the males will usually find like a carcass, uh, usually something smaller, uh, like a squirrel or maybe a, a baby bunny that has recently passed. The males will find them first and then they'll emit pheromones to track the females. Look at them walking around. Come, come close. So this is the male and there's a difference. So the, our male is usually just larger. Um, no, actually with these guys, uh, they can, both the females and the males can be large. It mostly depends on how many, how much of the, um, the carrion, we call it a meatball. So the parents will prepare that meatball and then lay the eggs next to it. And that's what the larva will feed on. So are they not sexually dimorphic at all? They are sexually dimorphic. Which, so what's the, different? Oops. The male has um, two large spots on his head in between his eyes. And the female just has one large spot and a triangle. Sexually dimorphic means the males look different than the females. So if you think about, think about like a lion. Right, the a male lion has what? A mane, right? So then the females don't have mane. So that's how they're sexually dimorphic. Now if they look the same then they'd be sexually monomorphic. So that means that you know, mono one, they look the same. Yeah, right? Yeah. I went to college. <laughs> yeah. You got it. I got it. I know my stuff slightly, not really. Here we go. Yeah. Um, bugs. What makes them so important to the ecosystem and what like why like why is this work you're doing in here so important? These guys are nature's decomposers, so they're extremely important for the ecosystem because we need that final step of breaking down um, uh, carcasses and things like that to get those nutrients back into the soil. And so that is their main job, um, what they do. And the reason that we're protecting them now is that their populations have declined by about 80%. This is actually the first insect that was uh, protected by the Endangered Species Act. No way. Yeah, yep. So uh, they've been in, uh, on the endangered species list since 1989. Um, oh, when I was born. Yeah, oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're still working. There is a couple of wild populations. And mm -hmm. so we'll actually go collect a few beetles from the wild population. And that's what we use as broodstock here. Awesome. Um, and then we'll breed them for a couple of generations and then release them here on site. 
Okay, so we're gonna go do that today. Um, so we have already released some. What we're going to do is check and see how successful those releases I were. See. So we're gonna look and see which which of the uh, chambers have uh, larvae in them, mm -hmm. and then how many larvae there are. Usually found, or were found, over the entire eastern half of the United States. And the biggest theory that we have is that they were really dependent upon the passenger pigeon. Mm -hmm. And so because there were millions of passenger pigeons, that meant there was probably a lot that had died and mm -hmm. were just the perfect size for these guys. Mm -hmm. um, so this uh, species is actually one of several bearing beetle species. It just happens to be the largest. And so it needs a carrion that is about the size of a squirrel. Um, so about 200 grams in order to have enough food to feed their offspring oh, for wow. them to go through that process of pupation and metamorphosis. So that's one, um, when the passenger pigeon went extinct, they think that that was kind of the first hit to the species. Um, but then again, with many insects, there is uh, always the, the issue of pollution and pesticide use and habitat loss that is also right. So. Well, I'm excited to see some of the some of the yeah. so to see what the stages the stage of larval what larval stage they're in right now yeah. out there and as another there's like a whole crowd of people here today. There, there's gonna be a few yep, few uh, folks a few folks, huh? Yeah, yeah, a few, yeah. few yeah, folks. We've got our owls and I've got apprentices and then some of my staff and then also we've got a couple people from Cincinnati Zoo. So awesome. Yeah, well, let's go meet them. All right. We'll put these little uh, beetle antenna. Yes, these are our antenna of good luck. Uh -huh. So this will hopefully produce, produce hundreds larva. of larvae. Yes, yeah, so that's what our goal is. <laughs> There's a hole there under all these wires, and there was a there was decaying rat. Yes. Lovely. Yes, and so you get to stick your hand in that hole and pull with gloves the... though. Yes. Yes, with you guys gloves. Have gloves on. Yes, okay. Yes. Okay. Always with gloves. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've I've held dead things, but yeah. you know, I don't know what I might get if I don't have the gloves. Yeah. Yeah. Am I picking up? things yeah, yeah am you i get your hands in it yeah oh. you're here you i like sticking my hands in uh we can do it slowly holes with, so with dead things yeah <laughs> i feel like um you guys know dexter yeah you guys uh -huh. remember dexter yeah that's one of my favorite shows yeah i used to love dexter and then the last season came out yeah, yeah. and then things changed yeah things changed yeah this had the fur of the rat on the top so they oh. deferred it and then they went but, down. Um, actually, well, that's weird because they actually we, we put them in there and put dirt on them, so they must have uh, brought some of that fur up to get it out of the way. So, how old are these carcasses in here? Um, just two weeks old, so not not too old. What am I touching here? Um, so that is the peat cup. Oh, that's what you're saying, the peat yep. cup. Yep. And so what you'll do is you'll try to get out the dirt around it, mm -hmm. and then you'll pull that up. It's a butt. Is it in a butt? Is it alive? Yeah. Is okay. it alive? Yeah, I found one. Yay, it's dead. And no, it's, no alive. it's alive. It's alive. Yep, so it's one of the parents. So the cool thing about this species, too, is that they exhibit biparental care. So they will stay with the larva. The female will feed the first instars. She'll chew up the food and feed it to them like a mama bird does a baby bird. Hard work. Hard working mom. Yeah, I mean, she dug all the <laughs> way in there. Yeah. Oops. And if it oh. breaks, it's fine. Um, but okay. you're gonna you're gonna come across something that's a little squishy. Oh, I broke it. Oh, there it is. Um, and so that's part of the rat. And what we want to do is we actually want to kind of scoop it out if we can. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of going to dig around it. And then if you see any large um, worms, those are most likely the larva. Let's see if we got me in there. Oh, nice. Good job. All right. So that's a very nice meatball. Um, let's see. Take a look at it. I don't think we have any larva. Let's, um, because the female was still there, there is a possibility that she didn't it could lie. be eggs. Oh, and maybe I see. they didn't hatch yet. I mean, it's mostly unlikely, but we'll just put it back in there um, okay. pretty much as if. So that way she can, we'll get you a new cup okay, of cool. heat pot and then we'll put her back in there. Um, Sleepy girl. Thank you. Sleepy girl. <laughs> there you go. And so we just want to kind of cover her up and protect her. And then, yep, we can put it right back over. Okay. Try to so find... next. Oh, we got one. Oh, we got one. Yay. Yay. So Let's take here. a look. You want to. Oh, wow. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Look at that. So those are the bearing beetle larva. Yay. So there's what, three in there that we see in there? So far, three. Look at them moving but around. We might have more. No. You have it now? Okay. It's like a juicy, chunky little. Yep. It's like the 
Marshmallow Puff Man or the Michelin Man. <laughs> Michelin Man. Yeah. So the way that you know that they're American bearing beetles is they have the orange again on their head and then uh, just behind their head. So that will, obviously when they go through metamorphosis, they're gonna completely break down and then reform. But that's the one way you know it's an American is it's got an orange spot um, right behind its head. Whereas all the other bearing beetles, it's either black or there's one that has a yellow fuzz. Oh, cute. So. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry about that little one. <laughs> So the way that they have these little, their little, their little six legs, just moving them around on that big, heavy, chunky body is insane. Yeah. That they're able to move that whole thing around. Are those little mites? Yep. So they actually have um, phoretic mites. Uh, so they have a symbiotic relationship with mites. And so oh, cool. beetles are the vehicles for the mites and it takes them from one uh, carrion to the other. And they also breed on, on the carrion species. So cool. Eh. You're coming with me. Where are these? Where did you? Where did you? Where's your friend go? You're coming back too. <laughs> a sibling of some sort. Oh, there it is. Running away. Yep. I got you all, my grubs. Well, I can smell the death in there. Yep. Mmm, death everywhere. <laughs> smell the death. Oh, can you get in the, get in the whiff of it? No. Yeah. No, well, I can. Sm I bet you smell it coming <laughs> through the camera. I'm mouth breathing right now. Oh, okay, <laughs> awesome, a... awesome. Okay, they're going back now because it mm -hmm. smells wonderful. Good boy, you stink, yay. Okay, okay, here we go. Nice little cap to their home. Yep. And then fill the dirt. Yep, go we'll ahead and put the dirt on. Okay, there's a little couple pieces of what <laughs> of rat at the top with the fur, we love that. Nice little home for them. And the nice little number, 216. Perfect. And we're done. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. Well, thank you uh, so much for showing me the uh, the fun beetle work. Yes. You know, I can tell you, it's probably one of the most important things we've seen today. Awesome. Yeah. But was it my favorite? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. I love you handling dead rats. Converted another person. Yes. Converted. And I mean, you already converted me. I have yes. my little my little headgear. Yes. And this is mine to keep. Yes. Yes. Okay. Can. I'm gonna wear it every day. Awesome. Until tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Thank you All so right, much. Thank you so much, Jordan. Right, bye. Thanks for your help.